Good morning, folks. Every year, the SDO enters eclipse season. The moon and Earth block the sun as seen from the satellite a few times each week. And every year, we get this UFO Nibiru talk. Normally, it would mean people are waking up and checking out new things, except I've noticed it's the same YouTubers fueling this fire every single season. I suggest you familiarize yourself with the satellite eclipse period so you can never be fooled again by that type of money grab. Moving on. Got a great update with video to the Florida sinkhole situation. The article accompanying the video is useful as well, discussing the mechanism, drivers, and human exacerbation factors. Australia's angry summer, while heat is the prime focus, the BOM is detailing many other forms of weather extreme, like flooding. I shared this link yesterday but didn't get to show it. It's not just honeybees anymore. In Ecuador, the Tungurahura volcano has been rumbling since December, but with a definite uptick over this past weekend and they're worried about an eruption. Major earthquake in China, and it won't count from my watch because I set the rubric at 6.0 and I'm not going to change mid-observation, but I know there are many out there using the same or similar quake factors and looking for other types of uptick watches, like five-pointers we had in Oregon and the Dominican Republic. True enough, a five-pointer in Indonesia isn't exactly like a five-pointer in New York City, right? Well, this falls into that same category. Highly unusual to have this type of quake here. 700 homes destroyed or collapsed, thousands more damaged, dozens of injuries. A quick note on the quake factors. Before yesterday's news, disappearing umbral field tilted the remaining field and opened the green hole further to Earth. But right afterwards, it came back and aimed to narrow that coronal opening, holding steady for now. For a quick review, USGS doesn't add all six pointers to their major quake list, but it shows the same basic pattern. First 30 days of 2013 saw two major quakes. Then we had our first quake watch and got a bunch in about 10 days. We had 14 days in between the last watch and this one, one significant quake. We're halfway through this one and we got three already. Moving on to the weather, two top stories. First. Australian flooding, very significant. Just like yesterday, the storms wrap around the north coast from southeast Queensland around to close to Port Hedland. Other top story is winter storm Saturn in the U.S. That's the big blue low in the center. The counterclockwise drive of these lows is what's causing these wild temperature swings. Lows have always pulled one way at the leading edge and the other at the backside, but the lows are lower and causing more extreme shifts. Once you look at how it moves the wind, the temperature delta should make perfect sense. Should also be noted that severe weather is not expected at this time, just high wind gusts south of the snow. West Coast, getting a rain break when Saturn broke across the states, but your next North Pacific low is en route to you. Comet Pan Stars, if you missed yesterday's video, it's getting brighter, set to reach perihelion in eight days. The pictures are coming in. It has been over two weeks since our last gamma burst. That's somewhat of a drought. Cosmic ray density holding just above 100. Another quiet sun with no major flaring. Developing groups are all talk these days. Either that or they wait until they turn the limb to fire. Meanwhile, on the eastern limb, group after group crests, then decays. Earth's collapsing atmosphere watches sunspot after sunspot pass without flaring or hopes of re-expansion. The lone eruptive feature yesterday came off the southeastern limb. Another filament in 193 angstroms, and again here in 304. Most plasma slid back into the sun. Now, as we discussed earlier, we got some Earth-facing coronal holes. The umbral field resurgence and tilt back has narrowed the Earth-directed field opening, especially since this is not trans-equatorial. But the planets are lining up as well. Hopefully the second half of the quake watch is less active and damaging. Thoughts are with the victims of that quake in South China. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.